Good morning, everybody. My name is Michael, and we're continuing in our readings of the New Testament. Um, we are going to be starting a new book today. Um, it is the letter of the Paul, letter of Paul to the Colossians. Um, just a little background into this, based off of the introduction uh, Paul wrote to the church in Colossae um, while he was in uh, prison in Rome um, around a 62 a D on a Domino, which is actually not after death, means in the day of our Lord. I um, was re-informed of me of this from my mom of the last time that I had said after death for AD is actually a misconception of what after death is not what it means. It's on a Domino, which does mean in the day of our Lord, which I like better. But I mean, if you think of it, after death is when we came into the day of our Lord. So, you know, either way, that's what it actually means. Um, so this is when he was written. This, all three of these letters were delivered by Tychicus and Ani Onesimus. Um, it's the other ones with the Falman and the Ephesians were written in the same time or around the same time. So without further ado, I apologize for waking up, but I want to make sure to get this reading done as I didn't do it last night because I got late, putting the baby to sleep, now I got home from work, and we went to bed. So I made sure that I was going to get it taken care of before I had to work today. So we're getting this one done. It's only four chapters, so it'll probably be just this one recording. Um, so yeah, without further ado, we'll go ahead and just get right into it. So chapter one, greetings. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in the Christ at Colossae. Colossae. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father. Thanksgiving and prayer. We always thank God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the, word of the in the word of the truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God and truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf, and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption and forgiveness of sins. Verse 15, the preeminence of Christ. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For by him all things were created, in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible. Whether thrones or dominions, or rulers or authorities, all things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in everything he might be prominent, preeminent. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, making peace by the blood of his cross. And you, who once were alienated and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his body of flesh by his death, in order to present you holy and blameless, and above reproach before him. If indeed you continue in the faith, stable and steadfast, not shifting from the hope of the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in all creation under heaven, and of which I, Paul, became a minister. Verse 24. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, 
and in my flesh I am following, filling up what is lacking in Christ's affliction for the sake of his body, that is, the church, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known. The mystery hidden for ages and generations, but now revealed to his saints. To them God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of, his, of this ministry, mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Him we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone, everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil, struggling with all his energy, and he powerfully works within me. Chapter 2 For I want you to know how a great struggle I have for you, and for those at Laodicea, Le Laodicea, and for all who have not seen me face to face, that their hearts may be encouraged, being knit together in love, to reach all the riches of full assurance of understanding and the knowledge of God's mystery, which is Christ, in whom are all, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I say this in order that no one may delude you with plausible arguments. For though I am absent in body, yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the firmness of your faith in Christ. Verse 6. Alive in Christ. Therefore, as you received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. So to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have been filled in him, who is the head of all rule and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the flesh by the circumcision of Christ having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through faith in the powerful working of God, who raised from the dead. And you, you were dead, you who were dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made alive together with him, having forgiven us all our trespasses by canceling the record of debt that stood against us with its legal demands. This he set aside, nailing it to the cross, he disarmed the rulers and authorities and put them to open shame, the, triumph, the triumphing over them in him. <clears throat> Verse 16. Excuse me. Verse 16. Let no one disqualify you. Therefore, let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food and drink or with regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. These are a shadow of the things to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Let no one disqualify you, insisting on asceticism, asceticism, and worship of angels going on in detail about visions, puffed up without reasons by, the, by his sensuous mind, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body nourished and knit together, through its joints and ligaments, growing with a growth that is from God. If with Christ you died to the elements, spirits of the world, why, as if you were still alive in the world, do you submit to regulations? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch, referring to things that all perish as they are used, according to human precepts and teachings. These have indeed an appearance of wisdom in promoting self-made religion and asceticism, and severity to the body, but they are of no value in stopping the indulgence of the flesh. Chapter 3. Put on the new self. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above. Where Christ is seated at the right hand of God, set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also be with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these you too once walked when you were living in them, but now you must put them all away, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and, ab and obscene talk from your mouth. 
Do not lie to one another, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices, and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Here there is not great here there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on then as God's chosen holy and beloved compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bearing with one another, and if, has a, and if one has a complaint against another, forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony, and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. Sorry. And whatever oh, page is ripped. In word or in whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Verse 18, Rules for Christian Households Wives, submit to your husbands as it is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Bond servants, obey in everything those who are, are earthly masters, not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord has, and not for men, knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ, for the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done, and there is no partiality. Chapter 4, kind of right in the section of that. Masters, treat your bondservants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Verse 2, Further Instructions Continuous, Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the, same at the same time, pray also for us, that God may open to us a door for the world, to declare the mystery of Christ, on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know when know how you ought to answer each person. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> uh, sorry. Final greetings. Tychica, Tychicus will tell you all about my activities. He is a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that we may encourage your hearts. And with him, one Simus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. They will tell you of everything that has taken place here. Aristar Aristarchus, may fellow, my fellow prisoner, greet you, and Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions, if he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who is called Justice. There are the only, these are the only men of the circumcision among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always struggling on your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has worked hard for you, and for those in Laodicea and Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, greets you, as does Demas. Give my greetings to the brothers at La Laodicea and to Nympha, and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans. And see that you also read the letter from Laodicea. And say to our Archippus, Archippus, see that you fulfill the ministry that you have received in the Lord. I, right, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you.
All right, and that is going to be the end of the Colossians book. Um, I hope you enjoyed the read as much as I do. Um, it actually speaks a lot in regards to, you know, what happens after your baptism we take on. When we do this, we come out of the water. We lay our old life down with Christ as he was laid down. And we're brought up into our new bodies. As it says, as was Christ resurrected on the third day, we put back a shame to all of the things of our old life through the work of God, because we don't have the ability to do it ourselves, which is why we lean and need God so much. We always lean on the Father for everything that we have in life, for the good things, the bad things, what seems to be the impossible things. Always lean on Him, continuously in prayer, continuously in thanksgiving. Always be thankful for what you have, even when times get perilous. Putting away the old things that you might have been angry, quick to anger, um, lying, being dishonest with people, trying to get ahead of somebody else just because it'll profit for your gain. Do it the opposite way now. Be truthful. Always speak in truth. Sacrifice yourself for somebody else. And I don't mean sacrifice yourself by dying for somebody else, but sacrifice your own life in regards to putting away things that you want for yourself and think to do things for others. This is the sacrifice of ourselves that is talked about. <laughs> Taking away sexual immorality like pornography and lustful thoughts and continuously cat baiting and looking at somebody else and going, oh, well, you know, I have eyes, I'm going to look. Well, that's what Jesus said is if you've looked with lust in your heart, then you've already committed adultery. You know, and, and abolish those things. So with that, I do thank you very much for being with me here. I hope you have enjoyed the read. And I will see you next time when we start on the first Thessalonians. God loves you. God bless you. Um, have a wonderful week.